Hey guys, welcome to Boxing Squared for boxing news and views from around the internet. Certainly much has been made of Joseph Parker's chin and how good it is. We've heard how he has a granite chin, a good set of whiskers, and it has even spawned the hashtag never being dropped, which Parker himself has used on various occasions on social media and exchanges with Anthony Joshua and his promoter Eddie Hearn. So David Higgins, Parker's promoter, he's also been at pains to point out on numerous occasions how good Parker's chin is. Parker has a granite chin. So in contrast, Joseph Parker has a granite chin. He's never been dropped. Joseph Parker's never been dropped as an amateur, never been dropped in sparring, and never been dropped as a professional. In terms of chin... Got a better chin than me he has, but not as good as Joseph Parker, so... Joseph's never been dropped, that's a fact. But the question is, how good is Joseph Parker's chin? Do we actually know? What we've been told is he's never been down on sparring, never been dropped as an amateur, and we know he hasn't been down as a professional. Never really been hurt that bad as a professional either. So let's take a brief look at his amateur career and pro career, which consists of 66 bouts as an amateur and 24 as a pro. We know he's undefeated in the pros. So his amateur career, it consisted of a mix of New Zealand-based fights, top-level fights on the amateur circuit in places like China, Singapore, Australia, Azerbaijan, and also the Commonwealth Games in India. So on the domestic scene, he had a rival in Junior Fire, who we know is now a top prospect in the paid ranks, 13-0. He split a pair of victories with Joseph Parker, so they finished 2-2. And if you saw Far's recent demolition job of Fred Latham, you'll know that he's got some power behind his fist, and he was beating down on Joseph Parker. And he also had a number of bouts with some other top amateurs, including Olympic gold medalist from Rio, Tony Yoka, and Rio bronze medalist, Philip Hergovich, who, as we've seen from his first couple of pro fights, he's got some heavy hands. And Hergovich in particular, he had a relatively close fight with Joseph Parker back at the Youth World Championships in 2010. So we're going back seven or eight years now, because Parker, he turned pro almost six years ago. So Hergovich and Parker, they traded some good leather back and forth in the semi-final. The Croat, he shaved the decision. It was a close one, and Parker left with a busted up nose. But he wasn't down. And Hergovich, he's got some good power even back then. And you can find that fight on YouTube if you uh, just put it in. Um, both guys, they were pretty raw at the time. That was clear. But both very talented, and it was there to see. So all in all, on the amateurs... He performed pretty well. He was one of the best rolling around with guys like Joker, Joyce, Hergovich, a number of others. But he wasn't really hurt. And from other things that I've read, there is no mention of him, you know, even being, I mean, he was generally, from what I've been able to ascertain, in pretty good fights. And these were generally sort of rock em, sock em sort of things, a lot of action. And that was a, a hallmark of Joseph Parker's early pro career. And in terms of the pro ranks, and this is where it really counts, how often have we actually seen Parker's chin really tested? I don't know how often we have. I mean, not many. His sixth fight, that was really his first in a series of step-ups, and that was being pitted against the aged Franz Botha, who was by then a long-past contender, but still a guy who had some pedigree behind him. And in that first round, both uh, basically he had a big right hand, which he was trying to throw and land. He missed a number of overhand rights, but eventually one connected about 13, 14 seconds left in that first round. And it looked like a decent punch. But Parker reacted as if he hadn't been hit at all. It was probably until that point the hardest punch that Joseph Parker had taken in his pro career. And his next fight, it was actually quite an interesting one. And this is the one where you would have seen and heard. I mean, if you haven't followed Joseph Parker for a long time, you've probably seen some highlights of this. But his seventh outing in the paid ranks was probably his most exciting of his short career. And probably one of the most exciting of his career, even till now. So essentially, it was an all-out brawl, a war with a guy called Afa Tatupu. And that was for the New Zealand heavyweight title. And both guys, they were swinging for the fences in that first round. And Parker even sustained a nasty gash above his left eye in the process. 
And it must be said, Tutupu, he managed to catch Parker a few times and flush on the chin. But Parker just gobbled it up like candy, and he didn't appear to be slowed or affected in any way. And I do recommend you check that out here on YouTube. It's a very entertaining watch. You just need to watch the first round, really. He cleans them up in the second. And I'll leave it to you to decide how hard was Tutupu hitting Parker, because some of them look like pretty decent shots. From that point on, from the Tutupu fight, until he fought Carlos to calm, Parker, he didn't really get drawn into positions where he was getting banged on the chin. And especially, he wasn't drawn into slugfests against lesser opponents. It was more that he'd pick his journeyman opponents apart, and he'd look to finish with what became a trademark flourish of punches. He'd put some nice combinations together and just sort of get the guy out of there. And he'd leave his opponents, you know, in the end, sprawled on the canvas. And this was part of the thing that actually helped build Joseph Parker's profile and the buzz around his name internationally. A lot of people may have not seen him fight, but they started to hear things and see things. A lot of people were getting interested. But, so on the way up, he was, you know, doing a lot of that stuff, but there wasn't much coming back at him. But in the Takam fight, so Parker's 19th fight, his first true test against an established contender... It was probably, as Bar Kevin Barry said at the time, a little bit too soon for him, but they had to take the opportunity. And Parker's chin, it was certainly tested by a guy who was acknowledged as having power. So in the 8th and ninth round, Parker, he was gassing out after unloading on the French citizen. And to calm, he managed to hit him clean several times with some good shots. And if the New Zealander, if he was hurt, he showed a little sign of it. I mean, what it did look like was he was tired. He looked exhausted. But clearly, you know, he won the fight. He went on to win it. Um, it was a very close fight. It was a pretty good fight. Close, absorbing, but his chin passed the test. So the 8th and ninth, he was put under pressure, but he passed the test. And he didn't even really look hurt. He was, you know, hardly rocked. I mean, some of them looked like really good shots. But he didn't look like he buckled or anything of that nature. And then later, of course, he fought Andy Ruiz, a guy with some power, and he never looked hurt against him either. So what can we take from the sum total of Joseph Parker's professional career? How does it translate into how good his chin is? It's actually very hard to say. To be honest, I find it hard to make a, a sort of good read on this one. I mean, clearly he's durable to some extent. And the added evidence of not being down in sparring or in the amateurs... Yeah, you know, it does lend some weight to this. And just on the sparring, he had a sparring partner in Izu Agono, another good boxer, talented prospect, lost to Dominic Brazil about a year ago. But Izu Agono was with Joseph Parker and Kevin Barry for a number of years in that stable. And he was sparring Joseph Parker hundreds, if not more, rounds. And we know Izu hits hard. He's been stretching some guys out in the paid ranks in emphatic fashion. So he's got heavy hands and he hasn't been able to put Joseph Parker down in sparring. I mean, I know we're talking headgear and bigger gloves, all that sort of stuff, but Izu hits hard. I mean, Dominic Brazil, he went down and he felt it. But the question, I guess, is the next logical thing to ask is, how many punches has the 26-year-old Parker, you know, real punches, heavy-handed punches, has Parker faced at the top level? arguably to calm, he's probably the hardest hitter of those he's faced, but it's not like he's considered among the top power puncher knockout artists in pro boxing today. He's a guy that's considered to have good power, but when you think of a knockout artist, you don't necessarily think of Carlos to calm. I mean, some of the others that he's faced, Andy Ruiz Jr., Bowie Tupo, Solomon Homono, Kali Meehan, they can all crack a bit. They've all got some decent power, but it's again, like to calm, not devastating, not concussive punching. And I think what is clear is Anthony Joshua is a bigger puncher than all of the guys that Joseph Parker has faced, probably by a mile. And we're talking in the paid ranks here. So he has power in both his hands, and we've seen him dispatch guys with some brutal uppercuts, some hooks, straight right hands. He's done some damage. So it really is an open question. Can Joseph Parker take Anthony Joshua's power? So we've established his chin is good, but how good? How good will it have to be? 
can he withstand Anthony Joshua's punching power? I'd really like to say definitively either way, but in my view, there's just not enough evidence to support either view based on the sample size, and more specifically, more accurately, Parker hasn't fought enough noted punches, or any big name noted punches, which if he had, it would certainly help give us a guide, give us a gauge of how good his chin is. So what I'm going to do now, I'll finish this video quoting a few lines from Parker himself. So he's told Sky Sports, if he hits me in the chin, he doesn't hurt me, then obviously I'll smile and try my best to hit him back. I think some fighters, when they throw a punch and throw everything they have, and it doesn't affect the other person, it might crush them a bit. In boxing, some fighters have good chins. I know that if I got him into trouble, Klitschko got him into, I wouldn't have let him off the pedal. I would put the pedal down and have chased him around. Now I'm sure there's going to be a very diverse range of opinion in the comment section. So please keep it respectful. But let me know, is Joseph Parker's chin up to the challenge of Anthony Joshua? Give me your justifications, you know, either for or against. So drop a comment loud and often, hit like, hit subscribe, follow me on Twitter, boxing underscore squared, I'm out.